picture this. You're in a park. It's a nice autumn day back in 1989. Okay. Sun's out, kids are playing, leaves are falling. Sounds lovely. It is. But this isn't just any park. Oh. This is in Voronezh, Russia. Okay. And on this day, something incredible happens. All right. I'm intrigued. This is what many people consider one of the best documented UFO sightings. Wow. So today we're diving deep into the Voronezh incident. Okay. We're going to look at eyewitness reports, investigations, the whole thing. I'm ready. The lasting impact it had on ufology and pop culture, the whole nine yards. Let's do it. Now, what really sets Voronezh apart from some other UFO sightings is just how many people saw it. Okay. We're not talking about a few blurry lights in the sky here. Right. This is multiple people, adults, children, describing this huge disc-shaped object. Really? Some even described seeing these strange beings. Fascinating. So let's break down those eyewitness accounts a little. Yeah, let's hear it. We have a whole park full of people, all different kinds of people, and a lot of them are saying the same thing. So what are some of the big things that kept coming up in these reports? We'll cross a lot of the testimonies. People are talking about this large metallic disc-shaped object. Okay, a classic. Yeah, and it was shining this bright light. Mm. And this wasn't just a quick glimpse. Okay. People were describing it hovering there for a while, like they could really see it. Wow. But here's the real kicker. Some even reported seeing symbols on the surface. Symbols. Symbols. Yeah. Like actual markings. Interesting. So what did they look like? They describe them as geometric shapes. Really? Yeah. So not like those crazy swirling alien languages we see in movies. Right. Just basic shapes. Hmm. I wonder what that could mean. It makes you think, right? It does. Like, what were they trying to say? Yeah. Could it be some kind of message? Well, some researchers think those shapes could be a way to communicate very simply. Interesting. Maybe even using math somehow. Like a universal language. Exactly. Something anyone could understand no matter where they're from. That's a cool idea. And remember, these weren't just distant sightings. Right. You said some people actually interacted with these beings. Some witnesses say they had these close encounters with humanoid figures. Wow. So what did they look like? Well, the descriptions vary a little, but there are some common threads. Okay. Like what? People said they were tall and slender with large heads and these piercing black eyes. Okay. And this is where it gets weird. A lot of reports mention a metallic sheen to their skin. A metallic sheen? Yeah, like they were made of polished silver or something. Now that's strange. I haven't heard that one before. It's pretty unique to this case, I think. But did they actually talk to these beings? That's what I wanted. Did they speak? But this is where it gets really wild. Okay, lay it on me. A few of the witnesses, including some of the kids, said they experienced telepathic communication. What telepathy? They said these beings were sending them messages directly into their minds. Oh, wow. Some felt feelings of peace and curiosity. Okay. Others got these complex ideas about the future or even the universe. Telepathic communication that's straight out of science fiction. It is. Makes yeah. you wonder how advanced they could be if it's true. Yeah, and why would they even want to contact us like that? That's a big question. Some think this means they're super advanced. Right. Like they can interact with our minds, maybe even influence us. It's a little scary. Others say it's all in people's heads, psychological stuff, or just misinterpretations. Well, that's always a possibility. Yeah. It's a debate that's going on to this day. I bet. But now imagine you're the Russian government. Okay. You hear about this huge event with all these people saying they saw a UFO. What do you even do with that? Right. So what was their response to this whole thing? I'm guessing they weren't too thrilled about it. You're right. At first they were very skeptical. Okay. But then more and more people came forward. So they couldn't just ignore it. Exactly. It became impossible to sweep under the rug. So did they launch an investigation? They did. They started interviewing people trying to find evidence the whole nine yards. And what did they find? Any smoking gun? Well, it was a mixed bag. How so? Some of what people said sounded pretty convincing. Okay. There were even some photos and videos. Oh. Uh, but the quality wasn't great. Ha. Huh. So still room for doubt. Yeah. And some people who said they saw things couldn't back up their stories. So it just got more confusing. Basically. So did the Russian government ever actually say anything officially about it? You'd think with all the attention it got, they'd have to say something. Oh, wow, right. But their official response was surprisingly quiet. Really? They never made any definitive statements about the object or if those people were telling the truth. Wow. So even after all that, they just stayed silent. Pretty much. Which, of course, just made things even more mysterious. I bet. 
people probably thought they were hiding something. Exactly. Oh. And this wasn't just a local news story. I know, right? This thing went global. It blew up internationally. News everywhere was talking about it. I can imagine. People must have been going crazy. It was a media frenzy. People were glued to their TVs for updates. So what was the general reaction? Was everyone convinced it was aliens? Well, you had the believers and the skeptics. Classic. Some were totally on board with the alien theory. Makes sense. But others were like, nope, there's got to be another explanation. So basically the world was divided. Exactly. It was a huge debate. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Me? Well, I try to stay open-minded. That's fair. It's important to consider all the possibilities. Exactly. But one thing's for sure, the Voronez incident wasn't just a flash in the pan. It definitely had a lasting impact. Yeah. It really changed how people thought about UFOs and led to even more research. So it wasn't just a cool story, it actually made a difference. It became this catalyst for a whole new wave of interest in UFOs. Especially in Russia, I imagine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It made people realize that Maybe these things weren't so crazy after all. And it pushed for more serious research into these phenomena. Yeah. People started taking it more seriously, looking for real evidence, and trying to figure out what was really going on. It's amazing how one event can have such a ripple effect. It really is. And it wasn't just about science, either. What do you mean? The Voronezh incident became a pop culture phenomenon. Really? It inspired books, movies, TV shows, all sorts of things. Wow. Like, what specifically... Well, there's this movie that came out in 1990 called Voronezh Encounter. Catchy title. Yeah. It was a fictionalized version of what happened, but it captured people's imaginations. I bet. And it got people talking about the incident even more. Makes sense. It's like the story just wouldn't die. Exactly. And it's not just that movie. All right. You said it inspired other things, too. Oh, yeah. It popped up in documentaries, books, even video games. It really took on a life of its own. It did. And I think it speaks to our fascination with the unknown. Yeah, like we're always searching for answers, trying to understand our place in the universe. Exactly. The Vornis incident gives us this glimpse of something bigger than ourselves. And the possibility that we might not be alone. Exactly. It makes us wonder what else is out there. It's a thought-provoking idea, for sure. Now, Russia has a bit of a history with unexplained events. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Voronezh wasn't the only strange thing to happen there. So what else went down in Russia? Well, one event that always comes to mind is the Tunguska event. The Tunguska event. That one rings a bell. It happened decades before Voronezh, back in 1908. Okay. It's this massive explosion that happened in Siberia. An explosion? Yeah. A huge one. It flattened trees for miles. Wow. What caused that? That's the million-dollar question. So we don't know. It's been a mystery for over a century. Seriously? Yeah. The main theory is that a meteor exploded in the atmosphere. Okay. That makes sense. But here's the weird part. There's no real impact crater. No crater. That's strange. It is, which has led some people to come up with other theories. Like what? Some people probably think it was aliens, right? You know, some think it could have been a UFO. A UFO exploding in Siberia. Now that's an image. Yes, yeah, definitely a wild thought. It is. Makes you wonder what really happened there. Before we get too deep into the Tunguska event, though, uh, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll dig into the evidence for both the meteor theory and that crazy UFO theory. Sounds good. I'm ready to hear more about this Tunguska mystery. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get back to this Tunguska event. Yeah, it's a real head scratcher. It is. We've got this huge explosion flattening trees for miles. Right, but no crater. No crater. So let's look at what we do know. Okay, what supports the meteor theory? Well, even though there's no crater, there are a few things that point to a meteor. Like what? First off, this event happened right when the Beta Taurids meteor shower was at its peak. Hmm. So maybe a connection there. Possibly. And then there's the stuff they found at the site. Oh, yeah. What was that? Tiny particles like melted rock and minerals. Okay. Things you'd expect to see after a meteor explodes. Well, like little bits of space debris. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a smoking gun, but it's something. But how do they explain no crater? That's the tricky part. It is. You'd think something that big would leave a mark. You would. But meteor folks say it's possible the object wasn't solid rock. What do you mean? They think it might have been mostly ice and dust. Ice and dust. Yeah. So when it hit the atmosphere, it basically vaporized. Oh, like it just disintegrated. Exactly. Big explosion, but no crater left behind. Interesting. So a giant ice cube from space. Basically. Makes sense, I guess. Yeah. What about the UFO side of things? What do they say? Well, they focus on things that don't quite fit with the meteor theory. Like what? Well, some people who saw it said the object changed direction in the sky. Really? 
A meteor wouldn't do that. Not usually. Meteors tend to follow a pretty straight path. Right. So that's a bit odd. It is. And then there's the pattern of the flattened trees. Oh, no. It's mostly like a circle radiating out from the center. Okay, that makes sense. But there are some parts that don't fit that pattern. Hmm. So maybe it wasn't a random impact? That's what UFO people say. Like someone was controlling it. Or maybe it exploded at a low altitude before hitting the ground. Okay, so a controlled descent or a low altitude explosion. Exactly. Those are some of their ideas. Anything else supporting the UFO theory? Some people claim there was more radiation and electromagnetic weirdness in the area after the event. Radiation and electromagnetic stuff. That sounds pretty sci-fi. It does, right? Like maybe some kind of advanced tech was involved? A UFO propulsion system or something? Possibly. But it's important to note that those reports aren't very reliable. Not exactly scientific. More like anecdotal evidence. So we've got these two sides, each with their own evidence and questions. Yeah. It's a real puzzle. Where do you stand on all this? It's tough to say for sure. The meteor theory is pretty convincing. Yeah, it does explain a lot. But there are those things that don't quite add up. The movement, the lack of a crater. Exactly. Yeah. It makes me wonder if there's something more to it. Maybe a really weird meteor we've never seen before. Or something else entirely. The possibilities are endless. They really are. It's exciting and frustrating all at the same time. All right, let's get back to Voronez and those eyewitness accounts. Okay, let's hear more about what those people saw. Especially those kids. Their stories were really something. Yeah, I've heard kids can be some of the most reliable witnesses. Why is that? Well, they're less likely to make things up or be influenced by what others are saying. Makes sense. Yeah. So what did they say about the Voronez object? Well, one thing that comes up a lot is the color. Okay. What color? They described it as red or orange. Red or orange. That's different. It is. Most UFOs are described as silver or metallic. Right. So that's pretty unique. It is. And they also said it moved in a strange way. Strange how? They said it was like it was dancing. Dancing. A dancing UFO. That's what they said. I've never heard of a UFO dancing before. What did that look like? Some said it moved really fast up and down, like bouncing. Okay. Others said it would hover, then suddenly dart off in a different direction. Like it was breaking the laws of physics. That's what it sounds like. So this wasn't just your average spaceship. It sounds like it was putting on a show. Maybe it was trying to get their attention. Who knows? Maybe it was just playing around. Alien kids joyriding in a UFO. Now that's an interesting thought. And, you know, a lot of those kids drew pictures of what they saw. I bet those are interesting. Did they draw those symbols, too? Some of them did. what they look like? Mostly geometric shapes, circles, triangles, squares. Like a cosmic game of Tetris. Something like that. Yeah. And we still don't know what they mean. Maybe it's a secret code. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll figure it out. Let's talk about those telepathic messages again. Okay. Those are always intriguing. They are. <laughs> What exactly did those people say about their experience? Well, they said they felt this connection with the beings. Like a mental link. Exactly. And they got messages and feelings without any words being spoken. Wow. So pure thought. It seems that way. Some said they felt peace and calm. Okay. Others said they got complex messages about the future or the universe. Like downloading information straight from the source. Kind of. <laughs> it's hard to wrap your head around. It is. What do you make of all that? Well, telepathy is one of those things that's always fascinated us. Yeah, it seems like something out of a comic book. It does. And we don't really understand it scientifically. Right. It's still a big mystery. But I think it's worth considering the possibility that it could be real. Maybe there are ways to communicate that we haven't even discovered yet. Exactly. Our understanding of the universe is constantly evolving. True enough. All right, we've talked about the witnesses and those telepathic messages. Yeah, well, what's next? Let's talk about that alleged government cover-up. Okay. The conspiracy theory angle. Yeah, that's always a popular one. It is. And in the case of Voronez, there are some things that make you wonder. Like what? Well, for starters, the government's initial response was very dismissive. They just brushed it off. Pretty much. They said it was just misidentification or mass hysteria. But with that many witnesses. It does seem a little suspicious. It does. Like maybe they were trying to hide something. That's what some people believe. What else makes people think there was a cover-up? Well, there are reports of government officials taking photos and videos from witnesses. Really? And they never gave them back? That's what people say. They promised to return them, but they never did. Sounds like something out of a spy movie. It does, right? And that, combined with the government's silence, just adds to the suspicion. Like they were trying to control the narrative. Exactly. They wanted to keep a lid on things. But why? 
What would be the point of covering it up? Well, there are a few theories about that. Like what? Some think they didn't want to cause a panic. People freaking out about aliens. Exactly. It could lead to chaos. Makes sense. What else? Another theory is that they were trying to protect their own secrets. Like they thought the UFO might be from another country? Possibly. Some what? top secret tech they didn't want anyone else to know about. So either they were worried about mass panic or protecting their own advanced technology. Those are some of the main ideas. It's like a puzzle within a puzzle. It is. The more you dig, the more questions you find. Mm. Okay, before we get too deep into conspiracy theories, let's look at the physical evidence. Right. Did anyone actually get a good picture of this UFO? That's the big question, isn't it? It is. A clear photo or video would solve a lot of mysteries. But in the case of Voronezh, it's not that simple. Not a lot to go on. What do we have? There are a few photos and video clips that people say show the UFO, oh. but the quality is really bad. The classic blurry lights in the sky. Pretty much grainy images, blurry shapes, bad lighting, the whole works. So it's hard to tell what we're actually looking at. Exactly. It could be a UFO, a weather balloon, a bird, anything, really. The evidence is inconclusive. Unfortunately. And don't forget about those reports of the government taking people's evidence. Right. So even if there was a good photo, it might be locked away somewhere. That's a real possibility. So much for solving this mystery. It's frustrating, but it also keeps things interesting. True. All right. Let's hear what the skeptics have to say. Okay. The other side of the story. What are their explanations for what happened in Voronezh? Well, they have a few ideas. Like what? One of the big ones is misidentification. Misidentification. Hmm. As in people saw something else and thought it was a UFO. Exactly. What kind of things? Well, things like weather balloons, experimental aircraft, even un unusual clouds. It's easy to mistake something if you're not sure what you're looking at. Exactly. Especially at night or if the weather's bad. So maybe those people just saw something familiar and jumped to conclusions. That's what the skeptics say. Okay, what else? Another popular explanation is mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Like everyone just got caught up in the excitement. Something like that. When there's a lot of talk about UFOs, people tend to see them everywhere. Even if they're not really there. Right. It's like the power of suggestion. So if one person says they saw a UFO, others might start seeing them too. Exactly. Especially if they're already looking for them. The mind can pay tricks on you. It definitely can. So basically the skeptics are saying people just got carried away. Pretty much. They saw what they wanted to see. But what about those consistent reports from all those witnesses? Well, UFO believers say that's hard to explain away. Yeah, it's not like everyone just made up the same story. Exactly. And the level of detail in some of the reports is pretty convincing. Like they couldn't have all just imagined that. Right. It suggests that something real happened. So we're back to square one. Kind of. It's a case of conflicting evidence and interpretations. The believers say the evidence points to a real UFO. And the skeptics say it's all in people's heads. It's a classic UFO debate. It is. And it's one that's likely to continue for a long time. So what's the takeaway here? I think the important thing is to be open to all possibilities. Don't just dismiss everything as nonsense. Right. But also be critical of the evidence. Don't believe everything you hear. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance between skepticism and open-mindedness. That's a good way to approach any mystery. It is. And it's what makes these cases so fascinating. Okay, before we wrap up this deep dive, we need to explore the bigger picture. How did this event shape our view of UFOs and the search for alien life? That's a great question. Stay tuned. So we've talked about those eyewitness accounts and that possible cover-up. Right, and that blurry evidence. Exactly. Now let's zoom out a little. Okay. How did this whole Voronezh thing change how we think about UFOs? It definitely had a big impact, especially in Russia. In what way? Well, before Voronezh, a lot of people just dismissed UFO sightings. Like they thought it was all just crazy talk. Pretty much. But Voronezh was different. Why? Because you had all these witnesses, these detailed descriptions. Right. And some physical evidence, even if it wasn't the best. Exactly. It made people stop and think. Like maybe there's something to this UFO thing after all. It forced them to take it seriously. So how did that change UFO research? Well, after Vornez, all these new UFO groups popped up. Really? Like dedicated research team? Yeah. Especially in Russia, they were focused on getting better evidence. The more scientific approach. Exactly. They wanted to study UFOs properly, not just rely on stories. Did this lead to more collaboration internationally? Oh, definitely. Scientists and researchers from all over started working together. Because of Oranez. Yeah, they realized that UFOs weren't just a local thing. It's a global phenomenon. Exactly. 
So they needed to share information and work as a team. That's amazing how one event could spark such a change. It is. But it wasn't just about the science. Right. You mentioned it had a cultural impact, too. Yeah. It totally captured people's imaginations. Like how? Well, think about all the books, movies, and TV shows inspired by Voronezh. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that movie. Voronezh Encounter. It came out in 1990. A whole movie based on this event. Yeah, it wasn't a documentary or anything. It was a fictional story. But still based on those real events. Exactly. And it yeah. got people talking about Voronezh even more. It kept the story alive. Exactly. And it's not just that movie. There were others. Oh, yeah. Tons of documentaries, books, even video games. Voronezh was everywhere. It really was. Why do you think this particular event had such a big impact? It's a good question. Hmm. I think part of it was the timing. What do you mean? Back then, everyone was really interested in UFOs and aliens. Right. It was a hot topic. So Voronezh just fueled that fire. And it had all the right ingredients. Multiple witnesses. Yeah. A detailed story, even a possible cover-up. Exactly. It was a story that people couldn't get enough of. A real-life mystery unfolding right before their eyes. It was like something out of a movie. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. From eyewitness accounts to government secrets. What's the big takeaway? What does Voronezh teach us about the unknown? I think it shows us that there's still so much we don't understand. Even with all our science and technology. Exactly. There are things out there that defy explanation. It's humbling, isn't it? It is. It reminds us that we're not the center of the universe. And that there's always more to learn. Exactly. So what should we do with that knowledge? I think the key is to stay curious, but also be skeptical. A healthy bell. Don't just accept everything you hear, but don't dismiss everything either. Question everything. Look for evidence. Keep an open mind. That's good advice for life in general. It is. And who knows, maybe someday we'll figure out what really happened in Voronezh. Maybe. But until then, the mystery lives on. And that's part of what makes it so fascinating. Well, folks, that's our deep dive into the Voronezh incident. A story of UFOs, strange encounters, and unanswered questions. We hope you enjoyed the ride. Keep looking up, stay curious, and never stop questioning. And on that note, we'll see you next time for another deep dive into the unknown.